Hey everybody, I'm Sheldon with SNS Horseshoeing, and today we're going to be working on a horse named Jackson. I'll be talking periodically throughout the video and let you know kind of what I was thinking and doing as I was taking care of Jackson. So right here, once I was done cutting the clinches, I decided to just go ahead and pull the nails individually. Usually I just get my shoe pullers and put it under the shoe and kind of just pull the whole shoe off and all the nails out at the same time. But when you get those pads on there, sometimes it's kind of a pain. Um, and also I just don't want to be torquing on his foot after it already hurt. So right there, what you see me taking off is the pad, and that just kind of keeps debris out of there. Uh, don't be too alarmed, it looks pretty nasty under that pad. It's all black and stuff, and most of that um, is this stuff called rate hoof packing. It's the hoof packing I have on my truck right now. Um, it has a lot of, it has like pine tar and leather and stuff, and I'll, I'll put a little bit more of that stuff on at the end, so I'll, I'll show you you'll be able to see what that is. Um, right now I'm just getting it all cleaned out and then I'll start paring away the foot just kind of see what we have to work with this time. Right there on that medial toe quarter you can see the remnants of that abscess and here in a second I'll show you what it looked like when I first found it. Um, here I'm just kind of cleaning up the frog and you can see he's got a big, nice, big, healthy frog. Kind of an interesting little thing that someone brought up in a comments one of my other videos. They said they had never heard of a, a part of one animal's body that was named after a different animal. I had never thought about it like that. I guess just being a farrier, you always call it a frog, but that is kind of interesting. You don't. There's no other animal that has a body part that's named after a different animal. Anyway, just some food for thought. Just getting that foot trimmed up. Um, just taking a little bit. He didn't grow a whole lot. Um, also on the sole there, you can see there is some redness, some bruising, which you can expect with the abscess. Uh, but you can see it trimmed off pretty nice. There's not a whole lot left. With that, we'll back up right here so this is backing up about two and a half weeks ago so at this point I had got my hoof testers on there and squoze on his foot a little bit and right off the tip of the frog I could tell he was pretty sensitive so I pulled the shoe off and unfortunately I didn't have my camera on at that time I didn't think I would honestly didn't think I'd be finding anything but then decided to put my camera on. So right there where I'm digging, right there, you can see in the white line, there's a little, you can see as I squeeze off the tip of the frog there that there's some black gunk coming out of there. So I'm digging at it there, trying to open it up. Because with, the, with an abscess, what causes pain is that fluid builds up and pus or whatever builds up and it doesn't have anywhere to go and that's what causes pressure and pain. And so if you can get it opened up and let it drain, it'll be relieved. It's kind of like popping a pimple, I guess. But I was, don't want to get digging too deep and get into sensitive stuff, so I decided to stop right there. And the owner decided she soaked his foot. She kind of got a dilute betadine solution going there and put it in a bag and then just dipped his foot in there and let it soak in there and and she was actually already taking a different horse of hers to the vet tomorrow so after this she just wrapped the foot up and took him into the vet just to make sure that there wasn't anything too involved um, and then so she took him to the vet 
and the debt vet paired out it a little bit. And then about three days later, once it was done draining and stuff, she called me and had me put this pad on that you can see in these pictures. Um, and under that pad, we put some of that rate hoof packing that I'll show you later on. Um, and just covered it with that plastic pad just so no other dirt and debris could get into that little pocket there where the abscess was. And you don't want to go covering up the abscess hole before it's done draining. If you do that, you're just going to clog it off again, and then it's going to start building pressure. So when I put that pad on there, it wasn't draining anymore. We just needed to keep it from getting infected again. So just to kind of clarify the timeline again, so about two and a half weeks ago is when we first found the abscess. She took him to the vet the next day. And then two or three days later when it had stopped draining, I came back, put the pad on, and that pad's been on for about two weeks. And now it's time to reset his shoes. So that's where we are today. And this right here that I'm pulling out, that's the, the hoof packing that you saw that was under the pad, which made it all black and stuff. You can see why it was all black. Um, Anyway, that stuff's called rate, and I tend to like it. It's economical and, and gets the job done. So, And this stuff you see me putting on right there, that stuff's called Durasol, and I really like that stuff. It's kind of claim to fame. It's, I mainly use it for thrush. Um, it kills bacteria, but also the ingredients of it harden up the sole of the horse, hence the name Durasol. Um, but basically it just hardens up the foot real good and so I stuck that in kind of tried to squirt some in the abscess little space there try to get that to harden up and also kill any bacteria and you can tell I like it I just kind of squirt some on the frog a little bit just to just for good measure I guess um, here I am just getting that shoe shaped up and that works real good I like to this one I'm shooing cold every now and then I shoe hot if I need to or cold and the way I'm doing it right there is kind of my preferred method at the moment just have my stall jack right there I stay underneath the horse if the horse is okay with the pound and sound and I can just shape it up real quick and I don't have to make a bunch of trips back and forth to the horse So now that I have the shoe shaped the way I want it, I, as you're shaping it, you kind of tweak it and bend the branches of the shoe. So I'm just taking, making sure it's good and flat right now. Um, then once I do that, then I can put it on the bottom of my foot and make sure the bottom of my foot is flat and that they match nice and perfect. And then, then I'm good to go. So right here, I'm going to get some of that right hoof packing out of the out of the package there I use my hoof pick and that's, that stuff's kinda nasty it gets all over your fingers and stuff so anyway so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put just a little piece under that shoe in the, the little pocket there that's from the abscess um, and the main reason I'm doing that is mostly just to occupy space I don't want a little rock or pebble to get up under there and start festering and causing problems or this will also help manure from getting up in there or whatever basically it's just to occupy space and it just so happens that this stuff is antimicrobial and and that type of stuff and has a little bit of medication in it so that's kind of my thinking behind that and like I mentioned before you don't want to be plugging up the hole if it was still draining if it was still draining I'd want to leave it open so it can drain because if you plug it up then you're just going to cause yourself more problems
this go around, I decided to leave that medial toenail out just because it's right there close to the abscess and five nails will keep this shoe on plenty good. So I don't want to cause any problems or put any pressure on where that old abscess is. I'm going to take a second and answer some questions. There's a lot of people have been asking about my breathing because you can hear me breathing pretty heavy, which I apologize for. I know it can be kind of bothersome. Um, but basically, I have a GoPro strapped to my head to give you guys a good view. And the reason I'm breathing hard is because it's hard work. Granted, I could probably be in a little better shape and stuff, but some people have kind of mentioned that maybe I'm a smoker or something. And, I could just tell you that I'm probably about as far from being a smoker as, as anybody could be. But so basically, the whole time I'm working here, I'm I'm basically doing a little air squat, and then also on top of squatting in midair, I'm holding up the quarter of a horse. Granted, this horse isn't leaning on me a whole lot, but anyway. So if you're wondering why I'm breathing, maybe while you're watching the video, do a little air squat for 13 minutes and and see if you get breathing a little bit. Um, anyway, like I said, I could probably be in better shape, but like I mentioned in my bio, I'm also a vet student, so I spend probably a little too much time sitting around studying, which isn't great for being in shape. But anyway, I'm right here I'm just kind of finishing up, clinching up this horse. Um, like it's, you can see there, I just have two nails on the medial side and three on the lateral. Um, which will hold the shoes on just fine. Um, and on that other hind foot, I just have a plain shoe on, and even when I had the pad on the right hind, on that other hind, I I just had a normal shoe because there was nothing going on there. And When I first started shoeing, I didn't know if you could put a pad on one foot without putting on it on the other foot. And In a situation like this, it's just fine. And obviously it's gonna be a little off balance, but he wasn't in full work anyway because he was kind of recovering from his abscess so having a pad on one foot didn't hurt him much thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video um like i mentioned i'm a vet student and so my i kind of make videos when i have time so if you want to know when the videos come out make sure and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified it's it's not a certain day of the week or anything so anyway have a good rest of your day and appreciate you watching. Take care.